to begin with like really short uh, introduction, I did my um, education, my bachelor's in India from Nagpur University. And then I, I, I was working in Mumbai for one and a half year as a software developer. I came to Ireland to do my master's in cloud computing after one year of um, master's course. I got a job here in one of the logistics company as a chief technology officer, after which I started to work in Microsoft recently uh, in December as a partner technology strategist. I am also founder of uh, International Women in Tech Group, which has more than 2,500 members in it. I founded India Ireland Connect Group on LinkedIn, which has more than 3,500 members. I am involved with a lot of organization uh, like Cleverit, who, who actually focuses on education for kids, data and AI. And we are trying to help kids to get educated in the newest technology for which is more beneficial for them in the coming future and which could lead them to a very brighter future. So thanks again, uh, Cleverit team for having me in. All right, Jamantika, that was lovely. So let's move on and uh, let me know if you would want to share your screen. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let me just share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. Good, good, good. So, um, We'll, we'll keep it. I know it's a Saturday and I don't want to take the whole hour of you guys. Uh, so I will keep it short and I'll make sure that it finishes within 30 minutes or 45 minutes because I know you guys might want to enjoy. So thank you really for taking this uh, time out on a Saturday and joining me in for the knowledge that I'll be sharing about AI. So I am no expert in AI, but definitely I'm going to share some details which might be pretty useful for you guys. So I assume most of you might be knowing what AI is and how does it work, but just to give a brief info and just to, in the layman term, how can we explain AI? I'll just start with what is artificial intelligence. So Artificial intelligence is a field of study where we want computers to do the things which humans do. Obviously, computers are faster when it comes to calculation and analytical abilities, but um, computers cannot take decisions on their own. That is, they don't have the ability to make a decision. In the past, we used to have um, large machines uh, I'll show you in here. Let's, let me get a present review. So in the past, we used, before that, maybe um, there are so many interesting games. I know a lot of you might be, I am a very big gamer, actually. So I love playing a lot of games. And I have seen there are so many games available where you can actually see the usage of AI and how the technology is enhancing this gaming world as well. So maybe try a few of them online. And it's it's not like, you know, you should never play games. Definitely play games, which is, of course, which has some, some knowledge. Don't play random games. There is this uh, Elisa talking robot. So maybe you should all try it. There's a small URL that I have pasted. I've also, I'll also paste that in the chat. So maybe you guys can actually uh, try Elisa. So Elisa is a very first talking robot. And it's not, not, not like a physical robot, but actually on your PC. So you can talk to Elisa and she can reply to your random questions that you have. And, and I would suggest to give it a go. Um, then... When, when we talk about the past that everybody was living in, the good, in, in the past, we had these big machines. It's not a computer, but it's a machine. And where this man, what he used to do, where how the processes and how information were, were being processed is when they used to key the information in. So this guy is actually keying the information in. And when the machine has processed this, the whole details that have been shared, it forms an output in the form of some sort of paper or any other sort of um, information, but which was not digital. So it was never like 
we we never know like what sort of information were being processed but they were certainly not digital there were certainly no technology that had been used as such but the good thing is now these machines have been converted to such small machines which we call as laptops these days and it's not just laptop but our phones our tablets which we use to play games watch videos listen to music and instead of keying information into such machine what we do is we tap so tapping is something a form of keying the information that used to happen long time back by putting some sort of an object in the machine and then getting the details out so what we do in this current uh, generation is we tap on our screen we tap on the icon that we would want to uh, access and that's how we get our information so if i want to watch a youtube video i'll tap the youtube youtube video icon and that's how i can see my uh, youtube stuffs so human beings are very much responsible to give instructions to the machines and in the past the things have been changed i know in the past things have been changed and now the future is very different so next thing we want to talk about is please don't laugh i know this is a very horrible uh, drawing <laughs> but this is what <clears throat> i could actually draw on a ppt so i was i was never any way good in drawing so i know how does it look <clears throat> in simple term when we talk about this so we'll assume this is a man and uh, i hope it look, looks like a man and uh, this man is looking at this object or i would say an image which is a house instantly me you any of us can now instantly say that this is a house we know like looking at this object we can just say that this is a house but in the next picture it's not the same with the machine so now human beings can easily look at look at look at some objects look at some moving object and say okay this is a house this is a flower this is a bird this is a tree but what happens with machine machine doesn't do the same thing it doesn't have the same decision skills that we have at the moment so machine in the form of with the help of this video it will look at the image or a moving object which is this house in here in this picture and it will process that information in the form of the data in form of some data so looking at the characteristics having some features around it it will form everything in the form of data and then it can infer the machine can then infer okay this is a house this might be a house or this may be a house so here we can say that probably humans and machines have some sort of similar uh decision making skills but they are not exactly the same so where we can just look at images and we can just say okay this is something you know uh, looks like in house this is a tree we can say it almost quickly and instantaneously but our uh, machines will not be able to do that at the moment so at least not in the past that because the machines in the past were not really that futuristic and now we have of course we have machines which will uh definitely scan some images and give you the correct answer so if we narrow it down if we narrow the whole process that i just explained before if we narrow it down we could briefly say what is an ai so ai is an ability which give, gives a machine where a machine learns learns something thinks about something and behave like humans so it's not exactly human but something which behaves like human that is the ability uh, ai gives to a machine so how is ai helping simplify our lives now we talk a lot of things about how we can use robots to do our stuffs how we can have machines do all our calculations very easily so imagine a robot who can actually uh, arrange or your wardrobe your uh, clothes area or anything you would say like a cupboard or anything it can arrange those things as as per you want or as you like or probably i would say as your mother wants because i am never very good in arranging my wardrobe and i would definitely want to have a robot who can do that for me so i know what the scoldings that my mom used to give me even now i cannot arrange my wardrobe so i know that that's 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 going to be the very best thing i could have if i have a robot who can arrange my wardrobe and or maybe uh 
we have a robot who can arrange or who can serve each and every member of my family a very customized cup of tea or customized cup of coffee wouldn't that be great because it's going to make our life much more easy is going to make in this situation is going to make my life more easier because i don't have to get up from my bed i don't have to go and arrange my wardrobe and also it will save me from my mom scolding so that is something that uh, probably everybody would want in life and this kind of robot is where where we talked about robot arranging a wardrobe or robot uh, giving serving coffees to all the family members these are all the products of artificial intelligence we use ai because these machines are artificially incorporated with human like intelligence to perform tasks as we do these machines and uh, intelligence is based on some of the complex algorithms and also our mathematical functions that we study in our school or colleges but ai may not be as obvious as the examples that i gave before they were like super simple and i think it's not really that obvious that we could uh, use ai in those terms so where else can we use ai so uh, now sorry yeah hi this is prateek yeah yeah should we uh, pause for a minute and take if there are any questions till now yeah yeah sure no problem so guys uh, if you have any questions uh, do raise your hands or unmute yourself and ask because it's always good to have the session interactive i hope you are able to follow uh, what she's explaining yeah if you have any questions feel free to jump in middle and you know you can ask don't wait for me to finish i'll keep going so if you if there is any question or doubt you have in your mind just feel free to jump in middle and say ask me i'll, I'll i'm happy to answer those i think right now there are no questions so you can continue okay <laughs> but if if there are any please feel free to jump in the middle and you know we can we can definitely take those questions so as i was saying like there are so many use cases we have uh, in ai and there are so many industries at the moment that ai has been used also there are so many areas and categories known to a human being that where we can use ai so here the examples we have is cars so we have autonomous driving coming up in the future so car is a very good example where you can find a self driving uh, car using ai mechanism to you know uh, reduces an uh, manly effort then we have banks where ai could be used phones as we all know video games uh, social media feeds and surveillance is camera then we have customer experience supply chain and blah 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 that's a that's a very very broad area uh, uh, that i am explaining about it but uh, ai could be used for image analysis then robotics i know a lot of people lot of lot of kids uh, these days are a fan of robot and they would really love to be in the robotic field um, yes is is there any question uh, from somebody raised his hand Hello. Yeah, Kumar Rawal. He raised his hand. Can do you want some? To we want to have some questions. Yeah, yeah. Are you hearing me? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this uh, yeah, yeah, which language is uh, they are writing the code? They are using which language? Sorry, I am not really able to hear your voice clearly. <laughs> no, uh, sorry. <laughs> which language they are using for the ai artificial intelligence yeah so ai you can actually use python is one of the hottest language at the moment so python is also a key language that could uh, help you to develop your ai um, ai projects and stuff like that but there are so many uh, so many i would say so many platform or so many portal where you don't actually need coding and it's it's all drag and drop thing which i'll show later on i have a small a uh, slide as well on that but python is a very main uh, language for ai and then you have your basics i would say basic c c++ java these are all the basic languages that everybody should know probably if they are jumping into coding 
Okay, so, okay, okay. So before Python, before Python jumping, is the main language. Yeah, Python is the main language. But before jumping to Python, I would say just brush up your C plus plus or Java skills because that's that's where you get all your basics in the Python. Okay, but how the child, uh, this person currently, how the child will be learn these things, uh, C plus or. Uh, yeah, so I have one slide on that. That what is best? Yeah, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, I am studying HTML and uh, CSS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that is good. That is good start. Like I, I am not saying you have to do Python at the very moment because this this age, I think you need to brush up your uh, basic skills. So HTML, CSS is one of your UI programming language, like, which is used for web development and all. But in order to get, uh, yeah, get in order to get into AI, you probably need to start, uh, you know, looking into C++, Java, and some sort of basic Python. But before that as well, you can start training your AI model using some other platform, which I will show in the next slide, which I would suggest all of you should go and develop some sort of uh, small, maybe Im image uh, project, image uh, recognition project or something like that on that portal. So you will have a wide understanding on, you know, how the training model works. So I'll show that in the next slide. Uh, is there any question on this one? <clears throat> okay, okay. So sure. thank you. Yeah. We have Mohammed Taibe with us who wants to show us some. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you Hello? Hello. Did anybody call me? Yeah, you have something so, to show, right? Yeah. Yeah. Should I should I stop sharing my screen? Oh, uh, hold on. I'm plugging. Hold on. Uh, that 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 was just I was just plugging the charger for like a smart robot. Okay. This thing. Look at this. Uh, uh, I have my camera open. Hold on. Yes, your your camera is open. We can see. Yeah. yeah. This little thing right here, I, mm -hmm. I know that this robot can invert and in, involve like machine learning. I know another robot that involves machine learning. It's called Vector, but the robot that I have is called Cosmo. Okay. So what does this robot do? It's just it's just basically like a pet. Okay, so is it is it like interactive robot? Does it like you can you does it have speech recognition or anything? Yeah, ma'am, I have seen this a uh, Cosmo. Okay. Okay, that is that is a very cool. I think uh, that is a very cool example in there uh, in terms of robots. It just showed a password when I started to charge the robot. Mm hmm. So yeah, the robot connects through Wi-Fi and there's the there's an app for it. Okay. So the app is on your cell phone? It is on my iPad. It's on your iPad, okay. Okay, that is good. That is really cool. Um probably there are more other sort of such just as you said vector is one of them but there are so yeah, many vector other. is really very much involved in machine learning like it has yeah. speech recognition and it works just like any other home assistant alexa google home siri you name it yeah that is cool <laughs> That's good. I think uh, maybe everybody, you you know, you can just uh, go on Google and start typing some cool robots that you can find. Of course, you don't have to buy, but definitely you can see the working uh, of your robot, probably the architecture that it has and all sort of things. So, yeah, that is very cool, Mohammed. That's a very good uh, example. Thanks for sharing with the other kids. 
we have any other questions or should I go ahead? So let, let's take the last question from Sarah Munir. Can you unmute, unmute yourself and uh, ask your question and then we'll proceed. But where do we use an artificial intelligence? Sorry, can you repeat that? Where do we use artificial, uh, artificial intelligence? Yeah, so that is what I was telling you. Your artificial intelligence is used in so many wide area areas. It's not just, you know, like when I when 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 just Mohammed showed you the robot. So there are so many robots that has been in process at the moment to use for personal things. So we use artificial intelligence to create few robots which can actually help human to do the task. It wouldn't actually contradict humans doing the task, but actually help humans to do the task. So AI, there are so many wider areas in AI as well. I just mentioned that few of them we can use in cars. So when we, uh, when we talk about autonomous driving, which is self-driving car, that's when we can use AI as an algorithm that will help your car to be self-driven. And, you know, it, it's going to just uh, remove the efforts that you're going to put in driving the car. We can use AI in banks, you know, in surveillance cameras, like, you know, catching thieves and all sort of things by in, in encryption, decryption. We can use AI in cell phones and all other areas. When we play video games, I don't know how many of you play video games, but there are so many AI uh, integrated video games that you can actually see. So you can use AI in a lot of different areas. Also Im image recognition, also the video that you are looking at me, I am looking at your guys, there is some sort of small AI that is also being used in your. So it's, it's more of a wider technology, depends on where you are planning to imp uh, Im implement your AI technology. Does this answer your question, Sarah? Yeah, thank you. Okay, good. Any other questions we have? I have teacher. Hello. I think let's proceed with this and uh, please raise your hand when you have more questions. Yeah, okay. We'll just move ahead and if you have any further questions, just let me know. Um, so I have an example of few robots in here that were developed in laboratory. Now, this imagine this robot, as I mentioned, that was developed in laboratory and we put this robot in an open field in a wide area of ground where we have a lot of other sightseeing and nature uh, miracles out there. So now this, this uh, robot is now standing near um, probably what, what we could ex expect, like we have put this robot in a wide ground where he could see sun, where he could see mountains, where he could see river, where he could see you know water flowing and all sort of things. So um, in spite of variation of these lights, in spite of variation of landscapes, in spite of variation of uh, various dimensions of the field, this AI robot must perform as expected. And this whole circumstances is called as generalized learning. When there are a few things that we have categorized and we have generalized and the robot is supposed to do the same thing as we want it to do, that's when we call as generalized learning. We also have the other example when this robot, while walking this robot just came across two roads. One is rocky, other one is paved. Now, what we will think, like if we go on a rocky road, our legs will start hurting. If we have a more subtle and plain road, it will be very good for us to walk. So that's what thinking we need the robot to have. And this strategies that he's planning and the circumstances around him when he is having some sort of things that you know some sort of reasoning that's when we call that reasoning learning so the robot must have that sort of ability as well moving forward the robot is walking 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 and he came across a stream a huge a big stream which he's not able to cross but after providing him a certain input which is a plank probably a wooden plank 
he is able to cross that cross this that stream with the help of this plank and now our robot is able to walk through and cross it so this robot uses the given input uh, uh, which is the plank in this uh, uh, slide which is the plank and finds the solution so here we can say that our robot has also has some problem solving skills which everybody uh, 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 which all the human beings have. So it's not really different from a human being, but of course there are a few other categories that we have to take a look in there. Now these three capabilities, generalized learning, reasoning, problem solving, these are all the uh, categories and capabilities of a robot who is artificially intelligent. That's when we call that having all these three categories in one robot, that is when we call that that robot is actually an artificially intelligent robot. And that's where we can use. So I have a few questions in here. Kumar Ravel. Hello? Yes, ma'am. I have a doubt. Yeah. Uh, do, can AI can think like a human? Yes. Yeah, so that's a very good question but uh, i think we are not that advanced at the moment where an ai can think like a human but to answer your question it's a yes or no so at certain stages when you train your model so the way you are thinking at the moment okay and you want that your robot should also think the same way so you are supposed to train your a robot the same way that you are thinking but if you change your thinking at that time you then have to go again to train your robot. So the robot doesn't have that capability at the moment, like the AI robot doesn't have the capability at the moment, at this moment, that he will be able to think outside the box or immediately change the circumstances or the thinking that we can do as a human being, we can do. So definitely AI can think, like robot can think like a human, but it cannot certainly change the behavior as we do at this point. Okay, ma'am. Miss Sophie, the robot, uh, she normally goes around the world and then she interacts with people. So I think she can have the feelings like a human, right? Uh, who? Sophia, the robot. Sophia the robot, yeah, yeah, she is. Um, so yeah, as I said, training the model and when you use, so there are a lot of categories in AI as well and which I will explain in further slides. So I think, um, I don't know who asked this question but your uh, question's answer is on the next slide. So is it okay if I move ahead and I can show you in a very uh, okay, brief overview about the, your questions, yeah? Yeah, sure. Um, I was just Okay, cool. Uh, any other questions? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so in the uh, in the generalized learning, the robot has to perform. Uh, what I didn't understand. What does the ro AI robot do in the generalized learning part? Okay. So in the generalized learning, AI must perform according to the circumstances that he has. So when I say that I have put the robot in an open field and he has um, light as one of the input, he has landscape, which he can see and la by landscape, I mean, um, you know, the view, the nature's view, the river, the mountains and all sort of things and the dimension of the field. So the robot needs to act according to these three aspects. So he's generalizing those things. So he's generalizing light as one of the source. He's generalizing the various dimension as the other source. He's generalizing the landscape as the other thing. So that's what we do, right? Like when you go out, you see different things. You don't, you don't actually uh, synchronize all of them simultaneously and say, oh, no, no, this is just one thing. The light is one thing, ground is one thing, and the other stuffs are one thing but you generalize them oh this is sun this is mountain this is river so that is what generalized learning okay thank you okay that's good we have naina maheshwari who wants to ask us something and then we'll move to abdullah and i think we'll be done with questions for them okay go ahead naina do we have to do something like a quiz 
sorry if there was a lot of disturbance can you come again yes i was asking that after the slide do we have to do a quiz or some work in scratch i will i will give you an exercise that will help you to understand this more better i don't know some of you might have already done but that is a very good start for you guys so there is no such exercise uh, so, uh, in the slide there is no such quiz or exercise that i have but definitely i would want you to do something uh, on your own so how things work is you shouldn't be told by somebody okay go do this do that make this your make this that but think as per your ability to you as per your ability that you have you have the platform with you i will give you the links as well to that area and it's completely free you just have to sign in and register your name in there and just start exploring things so there are a lot of youtube videos that you'll find how to use that platform and i i would really recommend you guys to because i've been working with with few other kids and they have been using that platform which is ml for kids uh, to develop few of the projects you know uh, on ai uh, so you will be able to train your model as well and it doesn't include any coding so it's very simple to Mom, use i i have already used ml for kids yeah so that's that's a very good platform i would see and if not everybody has used try using it and try developing some of the other models so i will give some ideas that you can you know actually use and develop some projects and let me know like you know after uh, if you if you still want to connect with me later on it's completely fine just let me know and we can definitely have another call or session where you know you are showing me some of your projects that you have implemented so yeah i'll i'll give that as well is that okay nana yes thank you okay abdullah next can you ask your question yes miss miss what did you mean by the reasoning robot what he do in the reasoning i couldn't understand it okay so the reasoning in the reasoning what we are doing so i'll let's take an example of us when i am talking about the rocky road and the normal road so the reason that we are given in here if i go on the rocky road my legs will hurt definitely i mean nobody wants to have a very mountainy road or very rocky road where you are you know putting extra effort in there but when we talk about the plain road it's so simple to go and it's so easy and it will save your time as well so that's the re reasoning he's thinking if i go on the paved road it's going to be too simple for me if i go on the rocky road it's going to be very hard for me to walk on that so that is your reasoning ability and that's what an ai robot should have as well miss which means to think about yourself that i will hurt or i will go up there i will hurt yeah so when somebody is creating a robot of course the thinking should match right as 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 i mentioned before that it has human like skills as well so when i am developing my robot he needs to have that reasoning thinking as well that if i go on this road i will have this problem but if i go on that road it's going to be very easy for me to go it's not just about road but any circumstances that you you will face or your robot will be that's how i will train my model to have it as reasoning skill as well and so is the problem solving as well if i am having a barrier in front of me how can i solve that barrier and cross my path so of course your the input is the plank i can just put an in, uh, plank and walk walk through so these three are the categories that every robot should have and that is what make a, and that is when we call it as an ai intelligent you know if they don't have a reasoning system so that because of no reasoning system they will be destroyed or you know they will not think about their selves what they do have to do yeah that's that's where you know that's an incomplete robot you wouldn't call it as an ai robot it's going to be a robot definitely which has generalized and problem solved but in circumstances it won't be able to apply reasoning and that's where your robot will fail thank you miss okay no problem so i think we'll move ahead yes we have no more questions as of now okay good so now moving ahead uh, as i mentioned like we have a lot of categories in ai but certainly there are two things that we should know about ai that we have weak ai and a strong ai as well when we talk about weak ai but before that like when i when i said our robot should have all three capabilities which is to adapt anything which is to have reason and also to provide solution 
And all these three categories can make our robot artificially intelligent. But that, that also has two sides, weak AI and, as I mentioned, strong AI. So let's see what's a weak AI. When we talk about weak AI, a very good example, I don't know how many of you know, but AlphaGo is a very good example of a weak AI. AlphaGo, he's a maestro of, it's a maestro of uh, the game Go. And if you ask AlphaGo to play chess, that's not going to happen because AlphaGo is not trained for chess. He's very good in Go and he's going to excel the Go uh, game. But when you talk uh, to him about, or when you play with him chess, he's going to fail definitely. He's not even going to move one step. So this makes AlphaGo a very weak AI. When you talk about Alexa, a few of you mentioned Alexa. So Alexa is... We might think, you know, that Alexa is a very strong AI and there are no chances that, you know, it could be a weak AI. But that's not completely true in here. Alexa also has some of the negative things that makes it a weak AI. So when you command Alexa to play some song, in here I would say Alexa, play Baby Shark. And Alexa will take two keywords, which is play play and Baby Shark. And that's when it'll process internally and it'll start playing uh, Baby Shark because it was trained to play that song. But at the same time, if you ask Alexa, what is the route from my home to work? It won't answer that question because Alexa is not trained to answer those, those sort of questions. And that that is going to make uh, Alexa one of the you know weakest AI that we can say. But definitely what he or what she's a what she's trained into like playing music playing other stuffs and whatever things we say that's gonna she's gonna excel there because that is what alexa is made for and this whole strategies will bring us towards the strong ai now what is strong ai so when we talk about strong ai robots in fiction like avengers marvel spider-man and blah 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 one of the very good example of strong AI is Ultron. This is, I, I think everybody might know Ultron. He is an Avenger robot. He is a very, very good example of uh, strong AI. Yeah, Abdullah, go ahead. Miss, I have a question that all the strong AIs are fiction or are they non-fiction? Um, all the strong AIs are in fiction at the moment, at this point, and so as far as I know. So today's in today's world, we have weak AIs with us. And with the current technology, of course, you don't know what AI could take shape. So AI has thousand and thousand times of capabilities that you know it could bring in the future. And it has a lot of drawbacks as well and a lot of, you know destroying capabilities as well so it depends on and i will explain that later as well but yeah at this point uh we have strong ai like uh ultron who is able who is capable to have emotions as well on the same time. so why are we calling ultron as a strong ai because it is self-aware and can also develop emotions at the same time this makes this ai's response unpredictable so when i am training my model or when I develop my own robot, I know if I say, how are you? It's going to say, hi, I am good. How are you? Because I trained it that way. I know if you play, uh, if you ask Alexa to play Baby Shark, it's not going to play some different song. It's going to play Baby Shark because that is what it is trained for. So we know the AI response, but strong robots, we don't know. It's unpredictable. We don't know what's its react going to be. So it's self-aware of what is going around. And that's why it makes it a strong robot. I know some people raised hands. So can you please ask me what you have? Hi, Ibrahim. Can you ask a question? Mm -hmm. It won't necessarily be a question. Okay. You raise your. Uh, but there is. I think there is uh, a. Ch uh, wait, hold on. So, AI. Where's the. In the meantime, shall we take Kyra's question? 
Um, sure, thank you. Uh, if self-driving cars develop or technology similar to machines working themselves like self-driving cars, is it going to be a, like a part of a strong AI or weak AI? Yeah, that is going to be part of a strong AI, I would say. Yes, definitely. Okay, thank you. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Coming back. Okay, wait, wait, okay. Um, there's actually a channel that shows like AI that can do like uh, this, that, that YouTube channel is called Two Minute Papers and they have a lot of AI stuff. Yeah. Like for, for example, this AI creates a 3D model of you. Beautiful mm -hmm. elastic simulations, now much faster, etc. Yeah. There's, yeah, yeah. There's even uh, artificial intelligence that can solve puzzles that look easy but are actually hard. The AI can solve puzzles like that too. Yes, they can definitely. AI, AI has that capabilities to solve co complex algorithms. So when we talk about puzzles, that AI could do now as well. So when, of course, when puzzles are developed, it's developed by a human. So when you develop something, you know the answers to it as well. If you're developing a game, you know how to, you will develop the pros and cons of the games as well. You will develop the winning area and the losing area too. So you're training your model to solve the complex algorithm. And this is where quantum computing comes as well. So I am not sure if you guys are aware of quantum computing, but that's area is when you um, actually uh, integrated with AI, AI and quantum computing could bring wonders in this world. And I think these two technology are the future. So sol from solving complex algorithm to solving uh, cryptography and encryption, decryption, all these stuffs, that's where AI and quantum computing could be friends and you know do things that were never ever imaginable. So I would suggest to, for those who are very much interested in the AI technology to take a look on the quantum side as well. So it's, it's, it's a little bit tricky and complicated, but I think for the very basics, uh, you're gonna love the quantum media. So I have this background. Uh, hello, ma'am, I just joined. Hi. Thank you. I uh, joined right now. No problem. So I was actually saying that, you know, if, if you guys are pretty much interested and want to explore more of the other options, just uh, take a look on the quantum side as well. So I have this background about quantum computing and which you can see similar to AI uh, visuals. So they have, they together have a very huge uh, opportunity and probably researchers and scientists are doing a lot of things and Google, Microsoft, they are doing a lot of stuff on quantum computing with AI too. So with these technologies, I think there's certainly a very bright future to have a very intelligent machine with us. <clears throat> is, is Cleverbot considered strong AI? Sorry? Uh, is Cleverbot considered strong AI? I'm sorry, I really don't know about Cleverbot, but what does it do? It's like a chatbot like Siri and uh, Alexa. No. No, that's not a strong AI. So chatbot like Siri, Alexa, Google, and Google Home, and all those sort of, those sort of things, they are very normal AIs that, you know, you can also develop uh, something like Cleverbot. So you can actually develop a chatbot yourself. So that's that's very simple uh, AI. I yeah. No doubt. Uh, do Google Assistant uh, like uh, Alexa? Same like Alexa? Google, no. Google Home is same like Alexa, but Google Assistant, which is on your PC, that's like Cortana and uh, that's a different thing. So Google Assistant, if you just now type on your PC, Google Assistant and you know, uh, it, it has speech recognition as well. So when you speak to Google Assistant and ask you know, Google, what's the weather right now? It, she's gonna just say, oh, this is the weather right now. It has some sort of the capabilities as Alexa, but uh, it's not typically uh, Alexa. I would say Google Home is like Alexa. Uh, I okay. think so, yeah. Thank you. No problem. So should we move ahead?
Yes, no. after that, I think we'll take questions from Siddharth Murtaza and Noor Jahan. So let's All move right. ahead. Okay. So I, I hope you got this concept of strong AI, weak AI, and, you know, Ultron, this is, I would say, a strong AI, which is in fiction. So next... Um, now, next we talk, you might be thinking, you know, what um, usually AI, how AI is different from machine learning and deep learning. Many of you might not have heard about deep learning, but uh, that, that is a part of AI. So we all saw what AI is, but machine learning is um, something that is used, um, it is used to solve your AI algorithms. And a um, deep learning is something that is used, that is a subset of machine learning. So ML provides, machine learning provides um, machines to learn through data and provide throughout the rhythms that you have around you. So machine is something that will help your AI robot. Machine learning is something that will help your machine to learn, provide the data which is present out there. And that's when you can predict something or probably uh, get some solution out of it. Wherein deep learning does this by learning through ways inspired by human brains. This means when um, uh, this means like like through deep learning you can actually solve data and pa patterns in a very uh, easier and simple way. So data and patterns, which is very important aspect of deep learning at the moment, can be actually perceived in a very better and very um, systematic way using deep learning so it has uh, deep learning has a human like thinking cap capabilities and i think deep learning will be used in the coming future as well to develop strong ai and it's going to be very very well portrayed for us to understand what is machine learning what is deep learning and how both of these categories could be used in developing a strong and perfect ai robot uh, we can take next questions if you guys have. So like uh, the website you just mentioned, uh, machine learning, does that work like uh, providing data? Yeah. Yeah. You can actually use that uh, website. I'll show you that you have a lot of things in that where you can use face recognition, where you can actually develop your project on face recognition, image recognition sort of things. And that's when you have to provide your data. So when you are doing your project on face recognition, of course you need to provide some sort of images in order to train your model. So there are a few um, steps that you might have to follow, but certainly you have to provide data. Let's take the next question from Naina. Naina, can you speak loud? Sorry, did some, somebody get what she's asking? Can you please repeat? Nana, your voice is not quite audible. Can you please write the question in the chat box so that Jeevantika can answer it? Okay, so Noor Jahan, in the meantime, do you want to ask your question? Yes. yes. Uh, okay, so is, so is deep learning used for uh, to make the robots um, solve like puzzles and uh, questions that need algorithms and and patterns. Yes, yes. You can actually uh, use machine. So, um, to to answer your questions, you might have to use all three of them, and you you can only end up using just two of them, either AI or you know ML or ML with the. Uh, uh, so AI is a whole category. Of course, you have AI when you are developing a robot, that's part of an AI. So I would say, yes, like you have to use deep learning in order to get all the information sorted because deep learning is something which will really help you in getting your uh, robot to work the way you want. So if you want your robot to think like human, definitely I think deep learning is a way to get into. But sometimes you can actually, if, if you want to develop like a small chat bot or sort of things, that's when you can just use ML as part of your robot, robot processing. And that's when you can, you know, 
just finish it up using your ml knowledge and machine learning knowledge any more questions we have the question from naina so i'll just read that out yeah yeah we all are going to do the work later up can you okay. I didn't really get the question. Can you please repeat? Sorry, I'm really sorry. The voice is really uh not good. Teacher, I was asking that uh, you were telling some work about like a quiz. So when do you do that? that that you will do later like you don't have to do it now of course it's going to be a pretty much big hassle to do it now but i will share the links and everything that you can you know use it to do some sort of project on your own so you so don't wait on me telling you you know like go and do face recognition there are so many white templates that you can use to solve your own uh, problems that you have if you think you want to develop a chatbot like a normal chatbot which just says you know hi i am this i am blah how are you and all sort of thing you can do that certainly with that also if you want to uh, use ai to do image recognition or image analysis that's the template you'll get there as well also face recognition so probably you know just find your own project in there your own interest in there and start solving that thing so maybe um, for a very good start you can just develop a small project in there and probably you know start exploring that area too so i'll i'll probably share the link later after the call okay okay ma'am yeah i'll share it in the chat so you guys can have it all right so let's proceed um so yeah uh, as i was mentioning that yeah you would need sometimes you would need all two of them sometimes you would need just one to solve all your problems but um a very good uh, futurist uh, named ray i cannot really pronounce his last name <laughs> it's very complicated but uh, he is a very well known futurist and has once said that in 2045 like 2045 we would have robots as smart as humans and this is this uh, is called as point of singularity so there are a lot of predictions that have been made like in 2045 we'll have you know a world full of robots in 2050 will have a world full of robots and those sort of things even elon musk is doing so many things related to ai i think he's one of the he's the he's only the one, one, one who is having, having the, do we have any questions yeah so uh, elon musk came in is doing a lot of things with ai he um, he thinks that human mind and body will be enhanced by ai implantation he thinks that you know you can certainly he's also uh, in the process he's researching a lot of things and uh, um i don't know if you have heard about the neural link project that he's having he's trying to put a chip in human brain which will actually so you won't need uh, probably a cell phone to hear music but you can do that through your brain when the chip is in your brain so that is a part of ai as well and neural link is this one of the biggest project and probably you can check it on google as well and could see some of the um, some of the examples in there but he said like he he thinks that human mind and body will be enhanced by ai implants which would make us cyborgs so cyborg is uh somebody um who is a human as well as a machine so he thinks that when we have those chips in our brain we could certainly be acting like one of these cyborg having all the ability of robot and also all the ability of a uh, machine so that is the future that has been predicted but certainly nobody knows what we have i mean however just like human minds ai is also unpredictable and as of now um ai is built to work with humans and make our task easier but who knows with the current technology 
what AI wonders could have, what AI wonders could we get to see in the coming future? So AI uh, is an emerging field today, and it is known as weak AI, as I mentioned, due to certain limitations. But in the future of artificial intelligence, is about it's all about how can we build strong AI. Right now, AI can beat humans in some specific task only, but in the future, it's expected of AI to uh, beat a human in all the cognitive tasks that we do. So instead of uh, robots being smart, as smart as human, they, they have the ability to be smarter than humans as well. So what a human mind cannot predict, that's what our future AI robots could also be able to do. Uh, we can take some questions. Abdullah? Yes, I wanted to ask that a mobile is also a type of AI because it has a face recognition. Yeah, that's what I mentioned in the first slide that our AI are now used in mobiles, laptops and all sort of things. So definitely there is an AI in mobile. Next question. Um, I have a question. Let yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, do devices like uh, mobiles and tabs, uh, a weak AI or a strong AI? Uh, I didn't get your question, actually. I didn't get your question. Ma'am, I'll yeah. it again. Uh, I was asking that uh, devices like mobiles and tablets are a weak AI example or example. Uh, mobile devices like tablets and phones, they are because you cannot actually put them uh, in the AI category. So they have certain features uh, which includes AI, but they are not they are not AI devices. AI devices are like Alexa, Google Home, okay, like, like robots like Vector. They are all AI devices, but okay. mobile and cell phone, they are just the machine which has some AI capabilities, you know? Okay. Should I move ahead? Yes. Okay. Uh, can you mute your mic, please? Thank you. Next, we will jump on what are the future aspects of artificial intelligence and where can we use AI? So uh, few of them asked about where can we use AI? Um, these are four major industries that AI could be used and could be used actually wide. So we can use AI in all sort of area known to a human being, but these four area are one of the top list areas that, you know, people can get benefit out of it. So which is healthcare, AI education, finance, military and cybersecurity. When we talk about uh, healthcare, uh, healthcare facilities are not available to all individuals living in the country. Like the very best example is right now in the COVID situation. So many people are dying because they are not getting proper treatment, because they are not getting proper doctors, because they, there are no medicines available yet. And that's where people are dying. There is no cure for this medicine. We got vaccines, but there is no such cure and nobody's able to detect how it happened, what had happened and blah, blah, blah. So we are all hearing certain theories, but there is no solid answers to it. <clears throat> so AI, uh, we can use AI in healthcare industry where you know AI can provide the facility to detect diseases based on what symptoms are we having. So of course, like right now, doctors can tell you if you're coughing or if you have fever or if you have cold, doctors can tell you, okay, you have viral because the symptoms are of viral fever. But today's we can say, you know, if, if you are coughing or if you have fever, you could have Corona as well, because that's what the situation is going. Now, AI could do this task much better in future if, you know, and 
actually this is already been in process we have few of the uh, examples in so google's uh, deep mind which is a technology that has been already beaten doctors in order to identify fatal diseases like breast cancers so google's uh, google is doing a lot of stuffs with quantum ai and those sort of thing and they have already been pro proved beneficial in the healthcare industry so it's not far away when you know ai will be detecting uh, common diseases as well as providing proper suggestions for medication as well so you won't have to actually go to doctor but then probably you'll have an app where you can tell you know i have cough i have fever what should i do and blah 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 and the ai device would be able to tell you okay you can take this medicine <clears throat> that will save you cost doctor's cost which is like super high uh, in the today's world and which is going to be very efficient for all of us then we have ai in education um right education can actually right education can enhance the power of individuals and the nations as well so on the other hand misuse of the same could lead to devastation results so as i mentioned when if we are developing some robot it's of course we are doing it for good but if in future if the robot starts to develop its own emotion it could definitely lead to a devastation process so um i maybe all of you know rajnikanth and there is this movie called robot so this is an example where you can see that the robot rajnikanth has developed is chit called chitti he is one of the very good and very efficient robot that everybody could want but at some point uh, that robot has developed his own emotion that develop has developed some of uh, some of the symptoms of being negative and he has led to one of the most worst and devastated robot that anybody could have so it's it's the right education and is the proper education that we need to have in terms of ai and how can we develop our robots and stuff like that where to use ai and how to use ai um ai is also used in finance industries to manage your economic health boost economy increase your economy in the government and country now uh, there is a very solid um evidences that ai could be very beneficial in military and cyber security recently uh you one of the europe's military um organization has ordered a huge amount of vr like the virtual reality headsets from microsoft so we have won a deal where they are using vr in the battlefield they will be using uh, virtual reality headsets in the battlefield and which is one of the very big achievement for a for the military industry so ai assisted strategies would enhance mission effectiveness and will provide the safest way to uh, execute it the concerning part with um, ai assisted system is that how it performs algorithms is not really quite explainable so as i said that you know it could be devastating as well at the same time it could be used for human benefit uh, beneficially as well so probably learning the right technology and using the right technology uh, and where to use that right technology is more important at this time rather than you know learning those stuffs and getting it out of it so yeah that's that's something um has a very wide future in there i saw somebody raised hand so do you have any question yes yeah go ahead um how how is i still i still do not understand how al is helpful in education how so um as as it in in order to explain it very simply there are so many courses available right now on ai okay we can see a lot of courses you can go and type in google's academy microsoft academy and ml for kids there are so many youtube videos where you can learn ai but it's going to be transformed in a very classical way you know like that's not predictable at the moment like you never know like ai how ai could be used probably uh, if we talk about robot you'll have a robot teaching you the whole story you don't have to go to online to search for courses you don't have to you know go to classes probably you won't have teachers as well human teachers you'll have uh, robots and they will be teaching you probably that's 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 going to be a scenario also um like 
people like me who are in working in the industries, people like, you know, who are uh, doing computer jobs, we, that that might not be needed as well. That would be replaced by robots again. And then automatically machines doing like automations. So automatically machines doing their own task. So that's where robot in education or probably AI, as I say, AI in uh, education is useful. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Good. Next, next question. Mama, I have a doubt. Yeah. Uh, can AI detect uh, us and tell what diseases we have and uh, if there is no disease in our body? Not at the moment. Uh, so I did mention in your in the healthcare industry. So at this point, we have Google's technology. So Google's deep mind is one technology that can detect breast cancer in a human. But we don't have such technology which will detect every sort of symptoms or every sort of disease at the moment. So there is a chance and there is a way that AI will be helping doctors and medical industries where they can detect through our symptoms, even the smallest disease that we have, even the viral infection we have, that could be detected. So okay, yes, the answer to your question is yes, that AI will be able to detect these things. Okay, thank you. No problem. Next question, we have any? No, so I will go ahead. Uh, I just have a few more slides and then we can, you know, we are open to all the questions if you have. So um, if we talk about careers, there are five top careers in AI, regardless of what company you're trying for. So I think this is not uh, something that you should look at uh, at this moment, because as you grow, things change, technologies change, and also these things will also change. So now at the moment, we have five things, which is artificial intelligence research, software engineering, natural language processing, user experience, data analytics. These are the jobs in AI at the moment, which are the first. Yeah. Ma'am, till what time do we have the class? Uh, we, should, we should be finishing, right? I mean, I just have... As I said, two more slides and we should be done. Okay. Yeah. So these are the five top areas in the industry at the moment with the AI. But as I said, since you are very young at your age and you don't need to think about all this, but at least have these things in mind, like, you know, in future, there are so many things coming up. So we have in Microsoft, we have these learning platforms uh, like AI school. We have a special classroom within Microsoft College Dream Space, which helps kids and AI and, uh, and students understand AI. So AI for School is a platform which is public and which is for all where you can find uh, everything that is related to all the education. So conversational AI, AI services, knowledge mining, autonomous system, responsible AI, responsible AI, and other stuff, including, you know, um, all the AI and its innovation. So you can take a look uh, and the, at the website and probably, you know, check your own part, which is more interested for you. And that should be all from my site today. So I have given a pretty much overview on this thing. And it's not just a Microsoft platform, but you'll see a lot of things in Google's platform as well. So Google, IBM, they are also doing a lot of research in AI and you will see so many um, courses available on Google's platform where you can actually find your answers. So that's it from my end. Do we have any more questions? Yes, I do. Over now. Yeah, please go ahead. Hello? Uh, yeah, please ask your question, Nana. Is the class over now? <laughs> uh, yeah, we are. If you don't have any questions, probably we should be done. The class is going on for a long time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I would say you guys have so many questions. Yes, I have no question. Go ahead, yes. Jahan. Um, yeah, so the, in the strong AIs, the strong AIs, do they have like feelings or 
can they answer? I said, I do they have feelings? Are yes. they like very yep. Yeah. So um, I I did give you an example of Ultron, who is a fiction uh, robot. Yeah. And I didn't mention that they're gonna have emotions and feelings as well. So yes, strong AI would have some sort of feelings, negative or positive, which might be able to. For an example, very straight example, if you have your own strong robot in future, if there is something that is developed, and if there is something bothering you or you are, you know, probably sad, that would detect that you know you are sad. So it had it'll have some sort of emotional feelings as well later on. But at this point, there's nothing as such. <laughs> Okay, so Miss, the difference between the weak AI and the strong AI is that the weak AI can answer like uh, specific questions, not about Teacher? not about like uh, personal things. Yeah, general yeah. knowledge. And the strong AI oh. it can answer about personal things, right? Yeah, that is true. Like literally, I mean, you've spotted all right. So weak AI can solve just particular tasks that you give it to him. For example, Alexa and AlphaGo. So if you are telling your, you know, AI to just play Despacito or Baby Shark, it's going to play just that. It won't do anything out of that. But strong AI would be able to do extra out of it. Teacher, I have a question. Yeah. Um, I'm going to leave, but what about that book? I will put that thing here. Yeah, just give me one second. Okay. Uh, if you guys any have any other questions, meanwhile, I have I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, are robots like humans? Uh. <laughs> Well, it depends. So you have uh, robots on your desktop as well. So as I said, let me show you if I can. Give me one second. Yeah. So uh, if I share my screen. Uh, where did it go? Yeah. So this is actually a type of robot as well, as I was mentioning, Eliza. So if you type something, it's going to give you some sort of input. Is something troubling you? Did you hear that? Yeah. So this is yeah. also what I would say, like Eliza is she's How a do you do? Please state your problem. But it is designed for specific answers only, like specific questions and specific answers only. It won't really uh, say or give you a lot of things about what what different things are. So this oh. is a weak AI, but it's a sort of in robot, which is on your desktop. And then you have different robots as well in a form of uh, Alexa, uh, an AI robot. I have, I have another question, which is like, what are like, some types of strong AIs? Some types of strong AIs. Yeah. There is no strong AI at the moment, but strong oh. AI will have certain capabilities in them, like having emotion, oh. they being self-aware, human-like people. So there, there is no strong AI at the moment and there is nothing that has been developed, but it's in process and it's in future. People are trying to, researchers and students, everybody, trying to understand what is strong AI and they are trying to build that strong AI. Oh. Okay. And Nena, this is uh, the question that you asked about the learning platform. So the, I have posted the link uh, in the chat and you'll probably see something like this opening up. Then you can just try without registering or if you want to register, blah, blah, blah it's, it's just easy step. So try without registering, open it up. And this should be a platform where you can see. So you can just add your project, name your project. Will we will we get like a certificate uh, from this like uh, Microsoft workshop? Uh, 
no not yeah. not at this point you won't get any certificate in here this is just a learning workshop but we are uh, trying and we are working on it to get something uh, from microsoft where you can actually get some certification as well so probably prepare and learn yourself you know about uh, the ai technology and machine learning get yourself prepared more Teacher? and maybe we can have another session again later on miss for- can you send the, the link for this website yeah, this is, I sent this already. No, it's not visible. You actually sent one that Elis at home. Base, the, the link for this website is invisible. It just came Teacher, uh, can you send, yeah. uh, send it in the everyone's because you might yeah, have sent it on the phone. Yeah, please send the link so I will oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, let me, let me. Got get. it. Got it. I got it. I'll post it again for you guys. Thank I you. got it. Okay. Yeah. How do I type? Oh. Ma'am, you no, said we are no. going to do something. Like, what are we hmm. going to do? What? You were saying we are going to do something. In young, yeah. we have to do something. In yeah, the so. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that is what I was saying. So when you go to this link, go to about and see this 20 minutes video in here, you will have the whole stuff that you are what you want to do. So there are a lot of templates. So this is one Peter, of the examples. I went to the link and it took, uh, took me straight to Aliza. Um, no, there is a different link. It's not for Aliza. Uh, see, I just posted oh. it. Uh, um, the last oh, one. Okay, I got yeah. it. Okay, that is good. Uh, try it. Miss, I have a question. Yeah. Is there any books or websites you recommend for studying more into AI coding? Um, what I can what I can do is I can send this to the uh, to your teacher Pratik or Harshit. I can find some links for you and maybe they can forward that link to, uh, to you to study more on the AI. But as of now, what you can do is go to Google's AI or Microsoft AI or YouTube. How should I come again? Uh, I didn't know how to uh, how to open that link from login. Just click on that link. Just click on chat, uh, and then you if you see the link, just click on the link. I click on login, but I don't know my username and password. No, no, no. You are already logged in there. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. So, when you click on that link, you should see this area. Um, I don't see this. I see that login right now. Click on projects. If you see project, click on project. Okay, teacher. And then add a new project. Name your project anything, like probably face lock, if you want to do some face lock thing. And then... You're in the recognizing, you can have text recognizing or image recognizing, or you want to have some numbers, sounds. So here we can do image and create. Okay, teacher. Then click, click on that. And you should see your train, loan and test, make. So when you click on train your project, you need to add new label, type your label name add and you have to drag pictures so you have to have like five or ten pictures that you want to recognize then drag in here you will have another window so that's why i'm saying it's a very long process and it's a very good project for you guys which i won't be able to cover right now but what you can do is you will have if you go on about you will have a video in here which you can see for like 20 minutes it's a 20 minutes learning video and that will show you how to use this platform and create one small project of your own mm-hmm. yeah. is that yes. Yes. yes can i leave the meeting now sorry can i leave it can i leave the meeting now
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. I think I'm done. And Pratik, I'm here. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Miss, you said something about Google AI courses and Microsoft Thanks. AI courses. Could you send like a link or the which specific ones? Come on. Yeah, yeah. Let me send you that link. Thank you, Miss. Bye. No problem. Thank you. And even take up for lovely and uh, informative webinar. I'm sure the kids have learned a lot of AI and have all their questions answered. It was a real honor having you with us. Thank you so much. It was really great to be here, and thank you, kids, for okay. your attention and so much of questions in there. <laughs> yeah, really good questions. And it was fun. I'm sure you think that is well, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Take care, everyone. Thank you, Jivantika, once again. No problem. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys, as well. Take care and all the best. Thank you, Missy. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Mom.